everybody, Fiber Spider back again in the kitchen with another tasty video for you. Recently, I did a video on how to make jalapeno jam, and I absolutely loved it. And, of course, was inspired to expand my horizons and try something new. So, today, we're going to be making orange marmalade. Now, I had never tried marmalade before, but I thought it looks easy enough and it is similar in the process to the jalapeno jam, so I figured I figured I'd give it a try. I love the results and it is so easy. Now, if you haven't seen the jalapeno jam recipe, check it out. I'll put a link to it in the description box down below. Again, it's very, very easy. The hard part is waiting for it to jellify, congeal, you know, that sort of, that's the hard part, waiting for it to do its magic. Otherwise, it's very, very easy, and it's so tasty. Love it. Now, what I like about the, the two recipes is that the jalapeno jam, it's a nice balance of sweet and spicy. The marmalade, it is a nice balance of sweet with a little bit of bitterness. Now, the reason why is because you use the whole orange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some recipes where you remove the pith, the, the white part in between the outer peel and the orange. We're leaving it in. I think it creates a really nice balance. You can, of course, you know, fiddle with the recipe as your little heart desires, but these are, result these are the results that I came across and I couldn't be more pleased. So, all you're gonna need for this recipe four oranges. I used navel oranges. And let me see here. One lemon. You need the zest and the juice of one lemon. A third of a cup of water and four, yes, four cups of sugar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of sugar, but oh, it is so delish. Now, another difference between the, the two jam recipes, the jalapeno jam, the amount of ingredients, it yielded two jars. The marmalade, five jars. You get quite a bit of a yield from this recipe, which I love. Now, of course, you can cut the recipe in half if you're so inclined. I love this stuff. Now, with this, with the marmalade, I was inspired to utilize the, the marmalade. So I'm thinking of branching off into perhaps making crepes or maybe thumbprint cookies. I don't know yet. We're, I'm still brainstorming, but I always like getting your input as to other recipes to try out, so time will tell. At any rate, without further ado, let's get started. Hello again. All right, so I have all of my oranges and my lemon nice and scrubbed and washed, and we are ready to go. So I got my cutting board, I'm armed and I'm dangerous, and we're gonna be using our little food processor. And over here, I have an induction cooker uh, because of the last time that I made jam, I'm now using this cooker. Um, it's because when I made the jalapeno jam, some of it like burnt onto the stove, so I've been exiled. So we're gonna make do with this guy. It works just fine, and I've got a three quart pot, which works out just fine for our purposes. So let's get to work, shall we? All right, so, oh, I forgot a sticker. I thought I got all the stickers. There we go. All right, so with your orange, basically just going to cut off either end, and we're going to do this with all four. So you see that white part, that is the pith, and that's what gives the marmalade a slightly bitter flavor, but it is not overwhelming. You know, if you want, uh, you could peel your oranges, you could remove the pith, um, and that would help with the, the, the bitterness factor. But I actually kind of like it. I, I like how it's balanced. So I'm going to cut up our oranges so that they are small enough to fit into our food processor. Just, you know, roughly chop them up. Not a big deal. Now, I have seen some other 
recipes where people will take the peel. They'll peel the orange, they'll take the peel, and they'll, they'll julienne it really nice and pretty. This actually, I think, is so much easier, a lot less labor intensive, and it is so very tasty. So you're just plopping the whole thing in. Just be sure that your oranges are nice and washed. Oop. Get that in there. There we go. <laughs> and you can do one orange at a time with this size, no problem. So that is what we're going to do. And you don't want it to be pureed, but you do want the, the bits of the peel to be nice and small so that your marmalade is nice and spreadable. So that is what we're gonna do. And then I will do the remaining three oranges off camera to spare you the noise. Okay, and away we go. So I'm just going to pulse this for a bit. Okay, are we good? Uh, almost. Okay, perfect. Okay. So let me just get rid of you. Make it a little bit easier. Now also, if you find that you missed some bits, you can pick them out later while your marmalade is cooking, not a big deal. So what I found that this consistency works out pretty well. You still got some chunks of the, the, the orange peel, I was gonna say lemon rind. The orange peel, you still have some chunks in there, creates a really nice texture. So with our trusty spurtle, just plop this into our, our pot here. All right, so one out of four. And we have three more to go. So I'm going to do the same thing with my remaining oranges and I will be right back. Alrighty, so all of my oranges are done as you can see right here. So kind of chunky, not quite pureed, but so very juicy. Now, what you want to keep in mind though, is that if you're using oranges that have seeds, be sure to remove them before putting them into the food processor. Otherwise, you might have an issue. So these, however, they did not. I already checked, so we're good. All right, so now we have our four chopped up oranges a third of a cup of water. Just gonna pop that in. And now we're going to do the lemon. We are going to zest the lemon. I'm gonna do that right over the pot, actually. Um, now, when you're zesting, you wanna get the, the yellow of the peel, but you don't wanna go too far into the white. Otherwise, you're gonna get, again, the pith, and that's gonna be bitter, which you wanna avoid. So, just going to go over the entire surface. Oh, this smells so good. I wish you were here. It smells so good. Absolutely divine. So yeah, just, just, just the yellow part of the peel right over your pot is fine. And you wanna do this before squeezing out the juice. You know, you want a nice firm lemon in order to do this. And then after we're done dealing with the zest, we will then squeeze it out and get that juice. I, I know I just said it, but I'm gonna say it again. This smells so Freaking good, I love it. Okay, 
Okay, we're making good progress here. A little bit slippery though, be careful. You don't want to accidentally get your throttle fingers. Now, another th <coughs> excuse me, another thing is when I did make this recipe, I honestly, I didn't notice any sort of lemon flavoring whatsoever, but hey, it doesn't hurt, so I'm gonna keep doing it. You know, I, I didn't notice any of the, the lemon zest or the, the lemon juice as far as a flavor. So if you're not a fan of lemon, you could probably leave it out, I imagine, but I opted to follow the recipe and it worked, so I'm going with it. Sometimes recipes, they do require some adjustments and some tweaking, but this, this worked, so yeah. If something works, I say, why mess with it? Work with it, go with it. All right, so let me get the rest of this in there. Very nice, and we are good, okay. Now, when when squeezing your lemons, you really don't want to do that over your pot because, yes, obviously seeds. So I'm going to slice and then squeeze over our little cup here so that if we do get any seeds, they will be in the cup and I don't have to fish them out of here. So give it a good squeeze. Okay, I wish I had more... <laughs> more upper body strength. Eh, we do what we can though. But yeah, with the lemon, you don't apparently want the, the fruit or anything other than the juice and the zest. Ugh. And of course, if you have one of those fruit juicers, then this would probably be an ideal time to use it. I do not, however. All right, and I see one little seed. Hello. Get over here. There, miscreant. Okay, now dump you in. Lovely. And then the other half. It's only one seed so far, pretty good. Oh, okay, I just got myself. At least I didn't get myself in the eye. That's a bonus, I'll go with that. Now this particular lemon is a lot juicier than the last one. So maybe we will actually taste the difference. I don't know, we will find out. Yeah, only one seed? There's something unnatural about that. I don't know. At any rate, pop you in there. Okay. Now that my hands are sufficiently sticky. <laughs> okay, so one last thing to add. And that is our four cups of sugar. Yes, it seems like a lot, but it works. You need it. Let's do it. All right, so careful not to spill. Just get the whole amount in here because you do need the sweetness in order to counteract the, the bitterness of the, the pith. So it's essentially one, one cup of sugar per orange, essentially. And then going to give this all a nice thorough stir. And yeah, initially it is going to look like a hot mess, admittedly. Um, so you know what, I'm going to give this a really good stir, mix everything up entirely, start cleaning up a little bit of things, and then 
we will get on to the next aspect of this process. Be right back. Alrighty, so we are all set to start. So I'm going to set my cooker to uh, a medium high, high, medium high thereabouts. So let's start with a, a high to begin with. Okay, it doesn't wanna be high. All right, so we'll start with the medium high. I'm still getting used to working with this thing, you know, but eh, you know, sometimes we do what we gotta do and I was determined to do this recipe for you guys. So hopefully you can hear me okay over the noise of this. So yes, right now it looks like soup. Yes, it's very, very watery and mushy and falls apart and so on and so forth. So what we are going to do what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up to a nice high heat so that it starts to boil. Then, once you reach that boiling point, we're going to reduce the heat down to a medium low, a simmer, and then the waiting game does begin. So, I'm going to bring it up to a boil, and I will see you in a bit. Alrighty, so you'll have to excuse the noise, my central air and this thing is going on at the same time. And as you can see, it has reached a boil. So let's bring it down to a, a medium low heat. Uh, and I'm just gonna raise it up just a smidge up to 200. And that's where we're going to leave it for quite a while, actually. I'm gonna give it a nice stir. Now you'll notice that it's quite frothy on top. That is normal. At least that's what I have found to be the case. That is normal. It's very foamy, um, and it's I oh, it smells so good in here right now. I tell you. So, what we're gonna do is at this point, you know, just give it a little bit of a, more of a stir. So, since we reached that boiling point, you know, reduce it down to a nice simmer. And then we wait. Now, this is not one of those recipes where you can set it and forget it. If you do that, you'll regret it because you don't want this to boil over. No, that is the last thing that you want. You don't want this to boil over and you are going to need to stir it fairly often. So don't go off and do something else. You're gonna have to be in the vicinity. Don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> so. Every now and then, give it a good stir, let it simmer. It's gonna you know, have that you know, nice little bubbly, bubbly action going on, which is good. And at this point, if you haven't done so already, you're gonna wanna sanitize some jars. So I've got a bunch over there, these little guys, and I've got six of them. I'm probably only going to need about five of them. And so what I did was I thoroughly washed them with soap and water, then put them on a baking sheet, popped them in the oven uh, that was preheated to 275, stuck them in there for about 20 minutes, let them cool, put the top on, and we are good to go. So those are good. This is good. You know what? It's not bubbling at all, so let me just raise it just a little bit. So I want to have some simmering bubbling action going on here. And then if I need to later, we will reduce the temperature a bit more. Not a problem. But you wanna keep an eye on this. You do not wanna go off and do something else. This is not a slow cooker crock pot recipe by any means. Well, I wanna see some bubbles going on there. All right, so when I first made this, it took about I want to say roughly an hour of simmering in order for it to get to that right consistency. And I think it could have even been a little bit thicker, to be perfectly honest. So I might even go longer. But another thing that you're going to want to do at this point is take a small plate and put it in your fridge to get nice and cold. And then later, when we're going to test the jam to see if it is the right consistency, we're going to do the plate test. So I am going to start the waiting game and I will see you when 
around when I think that it is just about ready for the plate test. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Alrighty, so I have been letting my marmalade simmer and stew for about an hour and 15 minutes, giving it a good stir every couple of minutes or so. And as you can see, the level of the marmalade has dropped dramatically. And that is because with the heat, it has reduced, it has gotten thicker, and it has gone from a very soupy consistency to more of a stew. We went from soup to stew in <laughs> a little over an hour. And you know, I also I reduced my temperature down to about 200 degrees. So as you can see, it is a lot thicker than what it initially was. And I already put a dollop on a plate, a cold plate, and it's in the fridge right now. And we are going to do the plate test. So let's give this a quick little stirry stir. And I'm gonna go grab my plate. And so this is what we have. Now, let's take a look, see if we tilt it rather slow, it's holding together. That's a good sign. Now, let's, let's do the, the taste test. Oh, it's nice. It's thick. It's, it's jammy. It's jammy. We're jamming with it. So let's give it a good taste. Guess what? It's finger looking good. Oh, this is great. It's still a little bit warm. Now, when we put this in the fridge, this will definitely thicken up a little bit more. So we are at the right texture and consistency. I love this stuff. Ah, oh, mm, it is so good. Oh, all right. So now we can take it off of the heat and just cancel this, unplug this. Ah, finally, quiet. Okay, I've been listening to the sound of that, that little fan in there for over an hour. It's white noise, I like it, but now I feel like I'm talking too loudly. All right, so just gonna take this off here and then we're going to move this. Fortunately, it is not hot underneath. go and now we can start transferring into our sterilized jars so last time it took about five of these jars now as far as the the reduction I don't know if we are going to fill all five of them again but we are going to we're going to see and we're going to find out how much we actually have. Now, these are, let me see here. These are, I believe, eight ounce jars, if I'm not mistaken. So the yield is pretty darn good, all things considered. So just scoop a little bit of this. Oh, it's so luscious looking. Ah, I love it. So yeah, after I spoon all of this yummy orangey goodness, I'm gonna put all of these in the fridge and let them, well actually, correction, correction. I'm going to allow them to reach room temperature before I put them in the fridge. And then after they have cooled down considerably, because this is quite hot, after they've cooled down to room temperature, then I will put them in the fridge and let them sit and thicken up even more. Okay, that's about good right there. And then we will be able to do the taste test. Now, if this batch is anything like 
my first batch, I am going to be really jazzed. I mean, it tastes the same as the first batch that I did. I don't know about the, the consistency. There's nothing wrong with the consistency of the first batch, but I just wanted it to be a little bit thicker. There we go. So now I just have three more. Actually, I have four more jars, but we're going to see what we're going to see, and we're going to go from there. This is so gratifying for any of you that have not made marmalade or jam before. I can't recommend it enough. It is so gratifying. The other day I was at the store and I saw all these jars of, of jams and jellies and I was thinking to myself, hey, I did that. You know, I, I can do that myself. I don't need to buy, you know, pre-made stuff with God knows what in it. No, I can do it myself. And it is so gratifying. You know, you, you get to feel accomplished in making something from nothing. And it is sort of like kitchen magic, quite frankly. You know, you're, you're completely changing the composition and the makeup of something. It's fun. Yeah. So, I mean, granted, there are other kinds of jams and jellies and so forth that I would like to try to make. But marmalade, I mean, it is one of those staples that I've heard so much about but have never tried before. So I figured, you know what? This is something I need to do. All right. So yeah, I think we're gonna make it again with the five jars. Let's see. And I can put a little bit more in, actually, let me put this down. I can put a little bit more in some of them without having it overflow. I think this is perfect. Five jars. So if I'm not mistaken, this is about 40 ounces of marmalade in total. No, eight times five. Yeah, 40, roughly 40 ounces-ish. Give or take. Now, of course, if you were to reduce this mixture even more and have it even thicker, then you would end up with less of a finished product, naturally. Okay. Very, very nice. I am delighted. Okay, so we are good, and I'm going to cap these up, and I'm going to let them sit on the counter for a while, get to room temperature, pop them in the fridge, and I will meet back up with you for the taste test. See you in a bit. Hey, everybody. Okay, so it is the next day. I let my jam sit in the fridge overnight. Really didn't need to be that long, but got busy doing other things. So this actually, this is from the first batch that I made, and then this is from the batch that I made last night. So I want to do, you know, like I, you know, like I've done previously with the jalapeno jam, I want to do sort of a comparison as far as the, the viscosity, if you will. So, because I felt that with my original batch that it could have been perhaps a little bit thicker, so I tried to reduce it a little bit more. We'll see if I was successful in that. Um, this is definitely not as not as thick as the the jalapeno jam. It's a little bit more gloopy, <laughs> but it is definitely jammy. Okay, really, 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 really tasty. And so I would not necessarily recommend trying to turn this one upside down on the cracker. Um, but, oh, so good. Actually, 
earlier today, I decided to experiment and forge ahead, and I tried to make crepes. Yes, crepes for the first time, and I was successful. I mean, they. I need to work on my technique, but I was successful, and I spread some of this marmalade on top, a little bit of sugar. Oh, so good. So this was my original batch. Mmm. It's lovely. It's sweet. It's got a, a, a sort of a twang of the bitterness, but it's it's a nice balance, okay? And that's why I really like it, because it's not all one or the other. So this is from last night. If I can get in here. There we go. So this is last night's batch. Now this seems, ah, this seems to be a little bit more solid than the batch that I made previously. Let's see. Oh, yes, it is definitely thicker, which is exactly what I was going for. So yes, if you adjust the amount, the, the amount of time that you reduce, you can thicken it up by reducing it more so. I am delighted because I was definitely going for a, a thicker consistency. Now, for argument's sake, let's get a nice dollop on here. Will this pass the upside down test? I don't know, there's a lot on here. I don't think it will, but it's still very jammy. It looks so good. Mm. Okay. It's holding its own for the most part. Yeah, I mean, it, it's sluggish, but yeah. All right, bon appetit. Mm. Really, really good. Mm. Okay, now, as far as the taste, tastes exactly the same. Again, the texture, the consistency, it's a little bit thicker, which is exactly what I wanted. So if you want it to be a little bit more on the runny, spreadable side, then don't reduce it quite so much. So this was for about an hour and 15 minutes or so. The other one was more about an hour or so. It's not exact. Uh, especially because the the temperature that you're using may be a little bit hotter, a little bit cooler. It is something to play around with, but the taste is awesome. Absolutely love it. And I am very, very delighted that we can turn this into this in a couple of easy steps, a little bit of time, and it's like kitchen magic. I love it. So, as I was saying, um, yeah, I made crepes. It was so tasty. Um, and I was thinking about perhaps maybe doing a video on those as well. Um, I don't know. We shall see. But listen, have you made marmalade before? If you have, what did you do that was similar? What did you do that was different? Um, are you a fan of marmalade or not? I don't know. I mean, my you know, some of my coworkers, they love it. Some people that I know, they're not a fan of it. I actually, considering that I'd never had it before, I'm pleasantly surprised. I rather like it. Uh, it's a nice balance of flavor, and I'm definitely going to be making this again, especially considering how easy it is. It's easy, but it is time-consuming, but it's worth it. So, talk to me in the comments section. What do you think? Let me know. And until next time... I want all of you to stay inspired. 
stay caffeinated, stay cooking and exploring in the kitchen, having fun, taking care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Have a great day, everybody. Bye for now.